Uh, hi everyone, I'm Bastimil Babka from the Core Kernel team, uh, working on memory management, so my talk is also about memory management. You can maybe see that I'm sitting in the obligatory IKEA Marcus office chair. It's many people, but Yuri Kosina is not here to take note of it. Take note of it unfortunately. Uh, my talk is about uh, memory reclaim and uh, part of memory reclaim that focuses on what pages will be reclaimed. Uh, it started uh, by me having to um, review some patch series in this area that changed a lot of old assumptions and uh, I'm not an expert on the reclaim myself so I thought okay I need to first uh, know how it works in the current version so let's check documentation oh who am I kidding there's no up-to-date documentation of the thing. There's just the source code and the commit logs as usual. So I had to learn the current state from scratch, make many notes, and then uh, I had the idea that maybe now this could be turned into a documentation. I wrote it in the work report and Michael told me thought, oh you should also make this a lapse kind of talk so here it is so um, memory reclaim is about uh, evicting uh, the memory that's not uh, currently used uh, and make space for uh, new pages because the kernel has a mantra that uh, unused memory is wasted memory so uh, it will try to cache all pages that the user space ever touched and uh, that means that eventually it will always get full if not then uh, your machine has uh, too much ram and you wasted memory because you are not using it and then when it gets full we have to evict some data out of it and make space for new one uh, the and this is mostly about pages uh, used by user space there are two main types one is anonymous pages uh, which the user space uh, requests by an app uh, call and they are populated uh, by touching the allocated area and if you want to reclaim them we must have to swap them out first if swap is available then there are file pages also known as the page cache which is the idea that the kernel will cache anything that user space will touch so uh, the user space can either map the files using a map call again with different parameters but also by issuing read and write operations the cache will be populated by by this as well and uh, yeah so at some point memory is full and now we would uh, like to keep some pages and discard others we would, uh, ideally want to keep the pages that will be accessed again in the near future because that will mean we won't have to read them again from the disk or from the swap but we cannot predict the future so what we instead can do is to look at the recent past and look at what pages have been accessed by user space in the recent past and uh, the principle of temporal locality 
tells us that uh, yeah these are the pages that have a high chance to be accessed again in the future because if, the, if they hold some database table that gets queried often then it will have it had queried queries in the recent past and it will have queries in the near future so um, we would like to sort the pages on based on how recently they were last used on the list that uh, that the, the most recently used are toward the head and least recently used are towards the tail and we discard the pages from the tail when uh, when we need to make room for new ones and this is really uh, like it is in the kernel each struct page that represents a four kilobyte page has a list head that's linked into such uh, all are you list uh, so ideally it would be really a, a ideal model of a list where we have 10 pages and if we access them from 10 to 1, the, the, that means the oldest one would be the tail and the newest one at the beginning. So if we access uh, page 5 at this point, it would uh, be moved to the, to the head of the list and the rest would be shifted. And if we access the page that wasn't in the list yet, because it's a new user space allocation, it would go to the front of the list. Everything would shift towards the tail, and now page 10 cannot fit anymore, and we evict it. So that would be the ideal LRU uh, model. Um, in practice, uh, as I said, there are um, some distinct properties of anonymous and file pages, which means it makes sense to track them separately, because at some point we only want to reclaim file pages and not anonymous pages. And in that uh, moment, it's not effective to search the one list that has both types and uh, check each page whether it's file page and skip the others that would be less effective than if we have two lists uh, so let's say uh, uh, the let's say that if there were anonymous pages uh, in the red color and file in the in the green color uh, on the same list the actual implementation has two lists uh, where the anon are separate from the file pages and that makes it effective on the other hand now we really have to explicitly choose which one we will balance uh, or reclaim because there's not a single list anymore um, another uh, change from the ideal model is that uh, the kernel actually cannot uh, track each uh, page access to move it on the list towards the front or head because it would be really uh, slow the, the pages that are in memory we want uh, to be accessed by the CPU and uh, translated with page tables and TLBs and the kernel has no uh, has no place in this intercept access that would be really crazy to slow. So we only can approximate uh, if the page has been accessed recently. Um, I will tell you how a bit later and uh, it turns out that this is more again more effective if we split the lists furthermore and uh, the pages that we think are really active 
are separated from those that are still in a sort of trial and we want to know if they are actively used or we should discard them. So we have uh, actually for both file and anon we have further split it to an active and an inactive value lists. And uh, yes, yeah, so so we could say that the pages one for five are most recent, so they would be on the anon part of the list. Six and eight would be on the inactive. The same for the file uh, LRU. Uh, actually, there's also a fifth list that tracks inactive pages, such as those that are subject to the mblock syscall, and uh, it just makes it, the implementation easier to have them on some kind of list as well, because then we don't have to special case that much. But uh, this inactive list is not uh, interesting. Uh, to reclaim because yeah they are not inevitable so they cannot be reclaimed and these five lists together are called uh, LRU vec like for a vector of five lists um, and yeah the large part of what reclaim has to do is to decide which how many pages to scan from each of these four lists, not the fifth one, and this is called shrinking the list. So that means the pages will be taken from the tail, and uh, depending on whether they were accessed uh, recently, they could be keep, kept on the same list, but moved back to the head, or moved to the head of another list, like activating means from the inactive list to the active list and deactivating the vice versa or they can be evicted entirely from the inactive list which means they are really reclaimed in practice uh, there are actually even more of these lists because uh, we have uh, numa nodes uh, today on many systems, multiple NUMA nodes, and uh, the, they can have different sizes and due to various MEM policies, the pressure can be different on each memory mode, memory node. So if there are many processes restricted to the one node, they, they would require that node to be reclaimed uh, much more frequently than other node. And Again, it means it's made more, uh, more effective to track uh, the LRU on each of the nodes separately. Uh, and we also have memory C groups, uh, which can have their own limits uh, that are not connected to the physical machine memory limit. And at some point, we want to reclaim just from a single memory C group. And again, it would be ineffective to search for a globe, search a global list for pages from a single C group. So what it looks like uh, in the end is that there are multiple nodes, there are multiple memory C groups, including the read, root memory C group. and uh, each of these these two combinations have to separate LRU back with the five uh, LRU lists. Uh, now we move on to the uh, the question of how how it's decided uh, which pages will be reclaimed or activated or deactivated. For this, we track uh, some state in each of the struct page, mainly the page flags. So we have LRU flag, which just means that the page is on any list, just a technical flag. Active means that the page is on the active list. 
uh, referenced. We will see how it's used. It means that uh, an active page has been accessed recently and it's on the way to the active list. It's accessed again. And uh, there's also a new one where click set uh, that I will explain later. Uh, what's also important is uh, uh, the page table entries and the access bit. So we have a struct page with these flags that are uh, important. And the page will be mapped to some uh, user space process with page tables. And at the lowest level of the page tables is a page table entry, uh, which contains the physical address uh, for the CPU to, uh, to translate virtual to physical addresses. And it also has some bits that help in the reclaim. So uh, when uh, the CPU accesses the page on behalf of the user space process, it will set this accessed flag in the page table entry. And this is how we can detect these user space accesses cheaply because uh, the CPU does that for us. And if it's not the night's landing CPU, it uh, will do it in a race-free manner. Uh, and since the page can be mapped to multiple processes, there can be multiple page table entries like this, or even more, and we can always get from the struct page to the individual page, page table entries to check for these accessed bits and reset them back to zero. Uh, so in another round of reclaim, we can again detect uh, uh, new accesses in the uh, reset. And this is what the page reference function does. So uh, now we present the almost complete state diagram that's, that uh, sorry that guides the reclaim uh, decisions. So we start with uh, a page that's not present yet because uh, because it was just allocated but not faulted. So it's not on the LRU yet. So there will be an initial page fault by the user space process that will instantiate the page table entry and put the struct page on the LRU list. And it will not, uh, the, active bit, the active bit will be uh, the flag, page flag will be uh, zero. Referenced will be also uh, zero or not set. But since uh, after the page fault is handled, uh, the user space will restart, uh, the CPU will restart the user space memory access. It will immediately set the PTE access bit to one. So that uh, doesn't tell us much at this point because yeah, when each page is faulted, it means it's accessed by, but we cannot know if it was accessed just once because uh, some uh, file was just copied from one place to another, or if it was accessed multiple times. So we don't uh, trust this, uh, this page table entry access bit so much after the first access. So when uh, the reclaim uh, sees this page on the inactive list, because it doesn't have the active flag, it sees only this initial access and says, OK, that, uh, okay this page was accessed at least once. We are not uh, reclaiming it. Uh, instead, we take this access the bit and turn it into the refer uh, uh, referenced uh, page flag. And then uh, the page is put back on the inactive list. The access bits are reset to zero. And now if 
Now we can see whether the page will be accessed again uh, during uh, until the next reclaim or not. So in the case that uh, the, there's another access by user space, there will be some page table entry or multiple entries that will again have the have the uh, ex, uh, access bit uh, set to one. But otherwise the struct page uh, stays the same and stays on the same list. And if there's another round of reclaim, it will now see that the page has both the reference uh, flag and there have been new user space accesses, or at least one. So we now we promote or activate the page and put it on the active list. And again, reset uh, the, the access bit in the PTEs. And now uh, the referenced flag actually is uh, not uh, used anymore for uh, further decisions. So that's why this uh, the, the question mark. Uh, a different outcome would be if the page that has just the reference flag was not accessed anymore by user space. So it was really just a use one page uh, that that means it makes no sense to keep it longer so if there's another inactive list reclaim and uh, the reclaim sees there are no no uh, the active bits in the page table entries then we just uh, evict the page and the referenced flag uh, doesn't save it and we reclaim it So uh, that was the inactive list reclaim and now if the page is on the active list and the reclaim is uh, reclaim is uh, focused on the active list uh, it will just uh, put the page back to the inactive list because on the active list we don't uh, track anything anymore because we assume that the pages are there for a long term and uh, uh, and the single set of the access bit won't tell us much so once we decide to do the active uh, list reclaim we just put the pages back to the inactive list and let them collect uh, the the page accesses again and yeah, all the flags are reset to zero and uh, if there was another user space access the page would go back here and and start again the uh, the way to be promoted or discarded if there was no user space access, another inactive list reclaim will just evict the page from memory because it's clearly not used anymore, even though at some point it was on the active list. Um, now, uh, so this is uh, kind of the main life cycle, how, how user space accesses and reclaim promote pages to active list and no accesses lead to eventual uh, reclaim. There are some special, but uh, special cases, but important one that I will explain next. So when the page is on the active list, it can still be accessed by user space, of course, which will set the uh, page table entries active bits because that's what the CPU does regardless of uh, what the kernel does and in case the execute uh, the page is exec uh, from executable uh, VMA and 
it's a file page. It, it means it's a binary uh, executable or some shared library. And uh, historically, we tend to tend to protect these kind of pages uh, more than others because uh, because page fault on during execution is somehow more bad than uh, data access and uh, so if the active list reclaim sees a page that has been accessed and it's an executable file page it will actually not put it on the inactive list but just keep it on the active list and reset the the access bit so it has another round of proving that the code in the page is still being executed uh, if it's not the executable file page then it, it's like if it has no page uh, accesses and it's uh, deactivated as usual uh, another um, special treatment of executable file pages is on the inactive list. I said that uh, normally the the reclaim of inactive list would just set the referenced flag and leave it on the inactive list. But if it's an executable file page, then then it's promoted uh, immediately to the active list. So. So that's again more protected than uh, the normal pages. And uh, the last special case is that if a page is accessed from multiple processes because it's shared between them, and that means there would be multiple uh, uh, multiple page table entries with the accessed bit set. Uh, such pages are also promoted uh, immediately to the active list and not uh, via this uh, referenced flag. So that's the complete picture for the user space accesses. The last thing is that the kernel can also access user space pages by itself by, for example, the get user pages uh, function, which will call mark page access, which will promote the page in a similar way that if it was accessed by user space. So non-active pages are, when they are, yeah, uh, Jan says that reach this call, I think, yeah, that uh, that can do that as well to get you to the pages. So yeah, that uh, yeah, that's useful when the uh, process doesn't use that doesn't map the pages to its own user space, but reads them by a standard operation. We would like to have them marked active as well and reclaimed. So, so this will just promote the page each of the access and uh, for completeness this also happens if there are page references and even more page references so just there are transitions from uh, between each of the possible states so uh, so this is how we decide uh, this is how we approximate the user space uh, accessing the pages in the almost LRU uh, kind of way. Uh, somebody's asking how long is this algorithm in place? Is it changing often? Well, I would say that this. Uh, is there for a very long time maybe just some of the nuances even even this special executable file treatment is there for a long time 
I think uh, the recent changes I will be talking about next. Uh, one is that uh, if there was an anonymous page, it would not start on the inactive list, but on the active list. And uh, this has actually changed recently together with the working set patches that I was uh, reviewing. Peter is asking whether it would make sense to have separate active list for executable pages and data and process. Mm, maybe it would save some iterations on the on the uh, list, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's all these little details that make a huge difference in practice. I completely agree with that. Yeah, so this is uh, now to the really new thing, or actually the first implementation was from 2013, but uh, now there were very recent changes. So, so the uh, the thing I've described has uh, works to some extent, uh, except uh, it's really important uh, for pages that are put on inactive list to be accessed uh, often enough to be promoted. And sometimes uh, when you have a workload that accesses one set of files and now starts to also access another set of files uh, the new new working set the new set of files might not be accessed uh, often enough to get promoted from the inactive list uh, even though some of the pages that are still active are not used anymore and it's intentional that the inactive list is small because uh, it save us, saves us work from processing uh, pages that are still on the active list. But it has the downside. So if there are, so in this case, if the workload accesses pages from 7 to 11, and then again 7 to 11, like in a cycle sequentially, uh, and uh, it, the inactive list has space only for four pages, then eventually each access will evict the oldest one of the five and have to fold in back the uh, previously oldest one. And actually these might be idle and we would like to promote some of these pages instead of this one and not cause all this trashing. So the idea is that if we can somehow detect that that uh, each of that these accesses are actually quite frequent, just not enough for the inactive list, then we could do something about it. But that means we have to remember something about the pages that we evicted. Uh, which is uh, done by using shadow entries in the Radix tree or these days X array. But again, it's uh, just an app approximation and not uh, a complete, uh, uh, not uh, ideal tracking, which should be, which should be impossible. Uh, so there's uh, uh, quite detailed uh, derivation of the rule how we decide uh, how we track and decide uh, whether the whether the excess distance was uh, not long enough uh, or not too long and this is uh, one thing that's very nicely actually documented in the working set C file and because I'm uh, running out of time I will not uh, go through this in detail probably so uh, 
but the main idea is that we can approximate how much inactive base accesses was there between uh, access to the same page by counting the number of evictions and activations and uh, if we store this the, the the actual number in the shadow entry and compare it to the new number after default then we can uh, compare the difference to the size of the active list and if it's small it means that uh, the page would actually fit in memory if uh, we evicted something from the active list and the, the difference is called uh, the refold distance yes and and uh, if we go back to this diagram what this does is that if the distance is detected to be small the initial page fold doesn't go to the inactive list but uh, directly to the active list and we call it working set refold activation uh, the the implementation means that each RRU VEG has a counter that's called non-resident age and that counts these uh, activations and evictions and uh, the refold distance uh, that's the difference between the counter value when the page was evicted and when it's refolded is compared to actually in the current implementation not to just the active uh, list size of the same type but also of the list of LRU sizes of the uh, other type but uh, for anonymous pages only when the swap is available and uh, that's one thing that was in the patch that I was reviewing and it's really not very intuitive and uh, yeah uh, when the page is deactivated uh, it also has a new working flat set uh, and that's how we detect pages that were active at least once and uh, it plays a role later in the reclaim cost model um, so yeah th this thing was implemented uh, for file pages in 2013 and this year also for anonymous pages and so it both should now be better detect uh, workload transitions but also make it hard to uh, more hard to reason about so how the reclaim works in general uh, it will be started when a node is below motor marks or by case of D or, or, or allocation that's out of memory. And uh, yeah, the first thing is to decide whether we will actually reclaim only inactive list or also active lists. And it uh, there's there's a target ratio that depends on the size of both active and inactive together so up to 100 megabytes it's one to one then with one gigabyte only one fourth of the pages should be on the inactive plates and it grows and grows with square root of the size one interesting consequence is that's probably not fully realized is that once you split the workload these into C groups, these uh, these targets change. So if you had one gigabyte C group, uh, it would be this this ratio three to one. But if you split it into ten, one hundred megabytes uh, C group, and suddenly the ratio for each would be just one to one. So that's, I don't think the uh, Mm, something that one would expect and there's also a, a rather coarse check that has written us once that if refolds is happening that 
uh, that's detected just because some counter changes, then then we start uh, deactivating uh, as well. Then uh, the algorithm tries to uh, determine how much to take uh, from each anonymous or file list. So there are again some corner cases, like if there are many inactive file page uh, file pages, then only reclaim the page cache. On the other hand, if it's too small, then uh, then only reclaim anonymous pages because. It, once it becomes too small, again the the inactive list might be too small to for the pages to actually get promoted. So it's full of corner cases like this. Oh, and by, by the way, sorry for interrupt. There is a question from Martin on the chat asking: three hundred twenty versus one isn't that a bit uh, out of balance? Uh, it might look uh, out of balance, but at that memory size terabytes that means the inactive list would still be gigabytes so um, i guess it works it it, it, it has been uh, added by facebook guys i guess they have these kinds of large machines that they uh, check that it works but yeah mm -hmm. possible that it's not ideal and they probably have c groups so maybe they don't actually achieve achieve this kind of crazy ratio anyway. So uh, then another important function is get scan count, which uh, uses these corner case decisions, and and if there are not uh, active, then it will try to balance scanning anonymous and file pages again according to a uh, rather detailed model that says that if we spend too much IO reclaiming anonymous pages then we should focus more on file pages and vice versa so again it counts some events uh, that approximate this kind of IO that's due to reclaim but also it takes uh, the swappiness parameter which you might know uh, that uh, that where the administrator can assess, say whether the focus reclaim more on anonymous or file pages and the default is 60 which is slightly tuned to reclaim more file pages than anonymous but it's not just this parameter, it's also how much IO is actually happening for each type of the uh, each type of the pages. And the result will be always a fraction between zero and one, but it is actually smoothed to only affect a third of the space. So it's only always between one third and two thirds. And then it will take the numbers calculated by this model and uh, in a loop uh, shrink each of the lists uh, in, in iterations of up to 32 pages until uh, various termination criteria are met. What's, uh, what caught my attention is that after the first iteration the type with uh, the that that currently has lower remaining budget is stop scanned completely which is interesting because we very elaborately calculated these kinds of fractional cost then probably there will be more than 32 page each type so we reclaim 32 page and then throw away most of the calculated value and only uh, continue with the other type. So maybe this elaborate calculation is not so useful after all and just not realized. Yeah, and then there's another magic uh, thing that after we reclaimed according to the 
determined scan scan counts, we also reclaim active anon just because it makes sense. So uh, yeah, I'm over time. So the conclusion is. Uh, so this is this was uh, overview that uh, omitted many topics completely, and means I still couldn't uh, finish it on time. Uh, and uh, yeah, my idea was to understand the thing better, and uh, and with that uh, review the patch series like the last one more with more confidence. But it turns out that. Uh, this is so complex thing with many moving parts and that one decision affects another in unexpected ways. There are many corner cases uh, and uh, things like I talked about that elaborate calculations are thrown away after first iterations. So uh, I so the main my main outcome is that I will try to put this into a real documentation. The 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 proceedings uh, paper was already uh, like first draft of that, and I have uh, a to do list full of the suspicious details that I will want to look at later, and to get better insight uh, in all these. Uh, dependencies. I don't know if it makes sense to try to create some simulation model because uh, you don't uh, get the whole idea just from running benchmarks. I think. Okay, so thanks for your attention. And uh, there are many questions. I guess we will have to take them also. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Vlastimir, and uh, especially uh, also for uh, making it on time, despite there have been already some questions uh, asked and answered during the talk. Uh, we uh, don't have much time because we have to jump to the other session, which I remind everyone is on Teams. If there is some very quick comments, uh, otherwise I will uh, close the session in like three minutes or even less. Yeah, and please don't forget that uh, the one of the things I didn't talk about is the MCG too much, and Michael Fulton has a talk about it tomorrow. So I hope it will nicely complement this one. Let's see people typing uh, last chance. Okay, and. Uh, yeah, thanks uh, a lot of people thanking you for the talk. I thank you again for the talk myself, and I will close the recording and the session, and we'll jump to the next one. Okay, cheers.